Hey everybody, Jordan here with Little Oak Survival. So I got a new piece of gear that I'm sporting these days in the woods, and it's a axe I picked up at the local hardware store, and the axe happens to be a snow and Neely. This is the Hudson Bay camping model, made in the United States, you guys can see. Not much to it, guys. It's an axe review, but if you're looking at this axe because you don't want to order Grandfords and Brooks from overseas, and you're like, well, this thing's 100 bucks, is it worth it? Because, you know, inflation. Um, things are more expensive nowadays. So, would this be a worthwhile investment? I've had this for about two weeks now. I'm cutting down trees, splitting wood, as you guys are going to see in some of these videos I'm going to throw up here. Um, my personal opinion, it's worth it. It really is. Let's go over some of the specs and what I think about the axe here, guys. So, first things first. This axe does come with a face mask. I lost mine in the snow. I don't know where it is. I'll find it later on this year. So, there's that. But it does actually have a, I'll say, middle-of-the-road face mask. Um, I wish I had it so I can actually show you guys it. But the stitching wasn't bad. The material wasn't bad. The snap wasn't bad. The fit was good. Um, my humble opinion. So there's there's that. You just have to take my word for that. When you get this axe, though, guys, from the hardware store or online, where you decide to buy it at, um, it is dull. It is very, very dull. So dull that I could take this axe and go like this to my hand. It would do nothing. So I knew that in the store. I felt it. I'm like, ooh, this is dull. Could be cost saving, you know, measurement by the company. Possibly. I'm not too sure. So I went home, got all my sharpening tools out, took my file that I had out, and I lightly, keyword lightly, touched up the edge to make sure there's no burrs or nothing crazy going out the edge. As you guys can see, she's good to go. Nothing crazy going on with that. But I did notice there was some kind of protective coating on the lighter portion of the blade right here so i don't know exactly what it was but it clogged up my file pretty good and pretty quick but whatever either way took it to a diamond board honed it and stropped it it's good to go it's razor sharp all fun times right so there's that on top of that guys we have two conical wedges up top here guys as you guys can see I like the conical wedges more so than the flat wedges, just for the fact that conical wedges actually push out in 360 degree area, opposed to just two sides. So it's going to offer more of a grip inside of your uh, eye of the axe, opposed to your flat wedge. So there's that. Um, the axe itself is actually made out of 1080 high carbon steel. I personally like high carbon steel uh, tools, just for the fact that if I don't have my lighter, or ran out of fuel, or I don't have a ferro seam rod, or a sunglass or whatever. I actually can take my time and find a rock, preferably chert, quartz, or flint, somewhere around me in my area, and I can find that and get sparks off the head of the axe. And if as long as I have the proper tinder and the resources, I can actually start a fire with just the axe head and the rock. So there's that. Sounds like a fun video idea. I should try that out later. Anyways, that's basically the whole axe head, guys. There's really nothing else special about that. Um, hundred dollars, like I said before, and let's go on to the handle here, and I'll get on to one question I know someone's going to ask me. So the handle here, it boasts a 24-inch handle from the bottom of the handle here all the way to the tip of the head here. It's actually 23 and 3 fourths of an inch. Is that a deal breaker for me? No. It is your typical American hickory handle, straight grain, guys. It does have some burnout towards the end, but that's perfectly normal with wood handles. Um, on that, you know, it's it's not bad. I'm probably going to put on some kind of neck guard up here as well, just in case of overstrike. I'm not too sure. I did paracord wrapped it before. I didn't really like the look, but I did like the fact that there was cordage attached to my cutting implement here. Now, drawback of that is if you just take it home and you don't do anything to the handle to help protect it. There is some kind of thin layer of like polyurethane or something on here. Not a whole lot though, guys. And um, if you just left it like that and you had paracord or some kind of cordage up here, it got wet, retained the moisture. Not only is it going to ruin your cordage, but it can actually soak the wood over time, rotting it, making it bad. So what it there was actually took a hair dryer and heated up the wood hot to touch. And then I took some linseed oil and I had to wipe it on that spot. And I did like eight layers or so, eight or nine layers, all over this handle, in through here, the eye and underneath here. So we have linseed oil. It's very water resistant at this point in time. I'm very happy about that. Put the inch tick marks here, guys. As you know, for the pole method, which is one of my favorite methods to use for navigation, along with that to measure like, okay, hey, I need to 
cut logs this certain length for whatever project I'm doing, bam, there you go. Now you can measure it. At least I can, because, you know, we use the imperial system here in America. So moving on. <laughs> That's that's the axe here. Now, one question I know someone's going to ask me, hey, Jordan, how come you didn't buy the Grand Furs and Brooks or the GB Small Forester's Axe or the Forester's Axe itself? Comparing the two, because I was really on the edge of like, maybe I could buy the GB, call it good, because I know that's a very good axe. It's a very reputable company. Nothing wrong with their axes at all. Me personally, that there's two things. One, price point, and then also physicality. Physicality meaning I like having a tool in front of me I can physically hold. I can look at it. I can inspect it. I know what I'm getting. That's what I like about that. Number two is price point. 100 bucks. okay, where I'm at locally. Or online, I've seen these things go as low as 75 to about 110 online, depending on the website. Your GB, right, that's going anywhere from 180 to 225 Again, depending on the website you're looking at, is there sales, whatever, right? Plus, on top of that, since they're over in Europe, it's going to be shipping handling cost, wait time for your package to arrive. Is it going to get damaged in shipping? All the fun stuff, guys, right? Now, granted, you could argue that it's going to get damaged in shipping as well if you order online. Yes, of course you can. But me personally, I like buy things locally and or in person. So there's that, guys. This is the, again, Snow and Neely. Whoops, my bad. Snow and Neely Axe, guys. Hope you enjoy this review. Share it, subscribe, guys. Make sure you hit that bell notification because I know YouTube's turned off a few of mine, so they probably turned off a lot for you guys too. So, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. As always, stay frosty, prep up. Yeah, bless.